I think that we'll be able to judge any part of the game, whether it be overpowered, underpowered classes, or anything else, um, pretty well, and hopefully not make mistakes of overbalancing classes when they're not needed. All right. Yes, please. Could you tell us something about the capital cities? How the player can participate in the progress of developing the uh, capital cities uh, through the five rating? Like leveling the city uh, states? Sure, sure. Um, the way the capital city stuff works, it's actually really, really simple. Um, we have a lot of systems in the game um, that, that, uh, that work uh, under the hood, you know, that, that are just... Uh, um, changing the way the world is, whether it's the campaign system or the city leveling up system or the guild leveling system. Or, so there's a lot of things happening. And we don't want to inundate the player with a lot of complicated information. Uh, it's really easy to confuse the player with, oh, you get this point and that point and this point and that point. We already have a lot of that with XP and Renown and Influence. Those are the three biggies for your character or it's pure Renown and Influence. So showing them things like, and you also got city XP and guild XP and all this crazy stuff that makes people's head explode. No. Go ahead. Yeah, no, I don't mean that, but uh, will it be quests that you can make in the world or in the city when you... S to, are you talking about to gain points to level your city up? Yeah. Yeah, let me get that. So um, we, we tried to make it easy to do this stuff, or we tried to make it straightforward. So in other words, what I'm getting at is um, anything you do within the game, and I, and I truly do mean anything, helps your city. So just by going out and hunting monsters, that helps to raise your city level. Um, by doing quests, it helps to raise your city level. Um, so anything you do within the game helps your city. There are specific things that you can do that help it more than others. And generally those things are things that you do in your enemy's city. So the, the best way to help level up your city is by attacking your enemy's city and doing crazy things to them. That's how you get the most city points. Um, now there are, uh, like I said, there's lots and lots of other ways to help your city. And, and in general, it's everything you do in the game. So simply by being successful as you play the game, you're helping your city. So I'm saying if you die, you don't. You if, you, if you if you die, um, then you're not being successful, and therefore you're not helping your city. <laughs> But you don't go back. No, you don't go back. No, no, no. no. I know you have more questions. Yeah. Just fill the space. <laughs> uh, regarding Siege uh, in Capital City, yesterday you said it would be uh, somehow instance or mini instance within the city. Mm -hmm. Can you develop on this? Sure, sure. Instance are not really popular. So, 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 so have a whiteboard? I think it's a whiteboard. <coughs> hey! I'm gonna give you paper, but I have a whiteboard. My favorite. I can move this out so you guys can actually see it. I need to draw. To think. So, um, first of all, we agree that instancing can be overused. So, instancing has a purpose for us. And that purpose is to monitor the balance of population and to ensure that, two things mainly, to ensure that the right numbers of players, specifically in RVR, come together to fight in, in um, the right numbers, like the, the numbers that are fun. Like if you have too many people in one area in RVR, it, it can be overwhelming, it's not fun anymore. If you have too few people, it can be underwhelming, it's not fun anymore. So we look at an area, we look at um, the tasks that you're supposed to be doing in that area, and we say, huh, this area is good for this many people. This is what we want. So that's one reason to use instancing for us. Um, another reason is simply to keep numbers down, especially with capital city raids. Like your capital city comes under attack, what do you do? You, you run to your capital city to defend it. Every single person on the server runs to their city to defend it. What do you do as an attacker? Oh, the city's under attack. What do you do? You run to the city to attack it. So in other words, we're talking about thousands of people in one space attacking a capital city. Any MMO, any MMO will tell you, and if they don't, they're lying, uh, any MMO will tell you that if you have thousands of people in one place at the same time, that their servers will just explode, because they will. 
So um, you, you, you've got to be really careful with that. The only other thing that we use instancing for is if we want very specific control, and it's really number one again, if we want very specific PVE control, or we have an encounter that we want to control population numbers on. So we definitely don't over-instance in our game. Um, instancing is used in scenarios more than anything else for a very specific reason, and that's to control population balance and RVR of 10 on 10, 20 on 20 kind of thing. So the reason that we talk about instancing in capital cities is because we just can't handle that many people, thousands of people on the screen at the same time is bad. So what we want is we want a good, fun experience um, without over-instancing. So the way that capital cities work... What's Does this have the same thing? You're killing it. Is this okay? So, so you may have seen me do this yesterday. I'll do it again, sorry. So if you guys remember Altdorf yesterday, did you all get a chance to kind of play around in Altdorf a little bit yesterday, walk around in it? Hopefully you did. So if you think about Altdorf, um, if you think this is Altdorf, sorry, I'll draw badly, um, and this is the palace, and kind of down here are the docks, and there's the Bright Wizard Tower right here, and the city square is kind of right here, and the Temple of Sigmar is kind of right here. Um, there's a gate right here. I don't know if any of you got to it. And then kind of back here is another little area. This area is called the War Quarter. In that area are things like cool player monuments that we showed you and Josh and I talked about, where you have statues erected to the most successful people on the server. It's all, it's a, there's literally a, kind of a corridor where the statues are around. It's really cool. And then in here are barracks and um, taverns and just some different areas. And there's another gate right here. This is the gate that goes out of the city. So that's the entrance to the city, basically. As an, as an attacker, when I attack the city, I break these gates down and I enter the city. At that moment, when the city becomes, the city actually becomes contested, just like any zone in the game can become contested. So the moment this city becomes contested, this area right here becomes an instanced area, if we need it to be. In other words, if there's too many people that come into that area, it will split off a second instance of itself. And if there's too many people that come into that instance, it'll split off a third instance of itself. So this area can have, you know, multiple instances of itself. Um, across all of these instances, you earn victory points to capture the city. So you enter this, let's for now call this 75 versus 75. That's the numbers that we're thinking of to fight for this area. Um, could it be more? Yes. Could it be less? Yes. This area is about the right size for 75 versus 75. It feels fun right now in testing. It feels like the right number. So when you come into this area as an attacker, you're blocked off in this area, in the initial phase, the, the attack phase of the city. And there's literally battlefield objectives kind of scattered throughout this area. Um, when you come in uh, as an attacker, you need to capture those battlefield objectives. As a defender, you need to defend them. So you're basically fighting for the city street to street, fighting over a bunch of different stuff. Once, as an attacker or as a defender, you build up enough victory points to capture this area, you either win or lose, just like any other area of the game. So as an attacker, if you win, this gate opens up and gives you access to the rest of the city, and the next phase starts. What happens during that time is the defenders at that point get locked out of the city. Like the owners of the city lose. They've lost. This gate closes to them. They can't get in anymore. Now, there's still a lot of them in the city. They're running around, ah, and you're running around behind them, killing them. Um, but they lost. You've won. All of your reinforcements can continue to come in. All of their reinforcements cannot. Okay? I'm sorry? But Go ahead. You have to win uh, most of the instant, uh, then open instances to get in the next area. Or not? Yes. The way that it works is there's one pool of points. Yeah. Okay? And that pool starts filling up. And it fills up for all of these, that one pool. So if you're successful in the majority of instances, you fill up that one pool and the gate opens up. Okay? okay. okay. That makes sense? Mm -hmm. So once that happens, our need to have multiple instances goes away because the defenders have lost. They're getting kicked out of the city. We don't have this, oh my God, there's 1,000 people in versus 1,000 people running around. So what happens?